The following is a paid program for Rental Housing Network. I'm Sandy Adams, and this is the Rental Housing Network Show. Rental Housing Network is a member-based information center that provides rental owners and managers with the resources they need to be better informed landlords, such as forms, credit reports, operational advice, classes, events, and a free subscription to Landlord Magazine. For a list of the benefits, visit our website at rentalhousingnetwork.com. Today, my guest is Clay Sellen, President and CEO of Signet Mortgage. Clay is not only a loan officer, but he's also a CPA. So thanks for being on the show. Good morning. Thanks. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about um, the loans that are available uh, in the Bay Area and um, and how, because, you know, I know a lot of people, they are, um, think that they'll never own a home because uh, they're never going to get that 20% down or save for it because, you know, when the average cost of a house in the Bay Area is over 800000 or wherever it is at this point, right. that's a whole lot of money for someone to save up or save their penny. So, so I want to talk about some of the load down programs that are available. But, but we'll start with, you know, some of the government loans. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the VA loan because I know that's 100% financing, right? That's available. Right. And that's my favorite because obviously the, uh, honoring our veterans and providing programs that will help them get into housing uh, is, is very positive. The idea that you can get 100% financing and purchase a home without mortgage insurance, that's the highlight of the VA is that it doesn't have the mortgage insurance which other loan don't low down payment programs will have so and very low rates it's a program where the loan itself is guaranteed by the government um, or by va the loss part of it's guaranteed by va so it's a very attractive loan for investors so the rates are very low and very competitive okay so now you say there's no mortgage insurance required even and that's really probably about the only loan that you could get that high of a loan with no correct. It, it's the only loan over um, eighty percent loan to value that has no consideration of what uh, mortgage insurance. And again, with the low rates, and they're fairly. Uh, there's a perception that they're difficult to get. That there's you know realtors I think shy away from them as well as FHA, thinking that it's uh, more difficult to get the loan or the appraisals are more difficult or something like that. It's really not the case. They don't take any longer than a regular loan to close. The qualification, there's really an undercurrent of trying to make a loan work for a VA, for a veteran. Um, so there's, you know, a, a little more feedback and a little more give and take in the underwriting to make sure that it gets done and done well for the veteran. So, and that applies to the appraisal side of it too. Um, the appraisals, you know, the uh, have to be done and it has to be a good house and all that sort of stuff like anything else. The only unusual thing is the termite work that um, has to be paid for by the seller, the termite inspection and the, and the work. Section and one? Yeah, yeah. And, and some section two, depending on what, uh, if it uh, implies a health and safety issue, would have to be covered. And so that's the only wrinkle, really, that comes into play. But um, a lot of um, sellers have those reports up front today, so they know what their cost would be up front, right? Correct. And they know the wor what work has to be done and they can make their own arrangements to get it done. So um, that's the only kind of rule that sometimes gets in the way or that uh, uh, people, sellers might find unusual is that, that the termite stuff has to be taken care of in advance. Uh, other than that, it's great. Well, being in the Bay Area, I, d I think we're not as knowledgeable or as familiar with government loans here as many other parts of the country where it might be you know more standard to use those type of loans right. and so i think that that's why people shy away from them is because they're not familiar with them well and they have a history if you go back years the loan limits or the amount that you could borrow was you know fha used to be in the 200,000s and right FA, it didn't work for the bay area exactly it wasn't even a consideration that's changed the the limit the stated loan limits for FHA and VA are at the 625500 in the high-cost areas of the Bay Area. So that's adequate. The VA can go a little higher than that. It, it was higher in 2014, and now we're just into 2015, so I don't have a lot of history on 
um, how that changes a little bit, but it'll be around there. Um, last year you could get up to over a million dollars with a VA loan in Santa Clara County. So, oh wow, uh, yeah, it's a big number. Now, again, they changed that and we're not sure how that's going to shake out in the first uh, couple of weeks of 2015, but we'll, uh, it's worth consideration. Okay. Well, so, okay, if you're not a vet, mm-hmm and you don't have a lot of money down, then you've got to look at other methods of financing. And so the other government loan would be, or a backed loan, would be FHA. Correct. Correct. And with FHA, it's a 96.5% loan to value. So in other words, the the borrower would, would need 3.5% down, which is a very low down. Right. Now, the 35 has um, is the, the hurdle you have to get over, solved a number of different ways. Um, those funds can be gift funds, so interested parties from parents, obviously, grandparents, that sort of relatives, fiancés, that sort of thing, can contribute funds towards that 3.5%. So, oh, on the FHA. They correct. Can be, you can correct. have some gift funds. Okay. Right, right. And can be depends on how you work it out. You can almost make it all gift um, on FHA. So that's good. That's a parent helping a child get into a home um, is an excellent way to do it. The... There's a number of down payment assistance programs that can also be utilized. Um, There's several formal ones, and then there's um, ones set up by um, Housing Trust as Silicon Valley and that sort of thing have programs to do it. They're tougher because you have this, you know, home prices is being high, and yet you have a income qualification and uh, that gets in the way. So you can, you know, it's a dance to balance the down payment assistance program with um now on these down payment are they um do they have a maximum yes there's and that's that's the problem a maximum income correct correct so that's kind of hard to qualify right for an eight hundred thousand dollar what you know you can't go that high but anyhow uh, uh, yeah you get in that little squishy part where it's really you got to hit the window exactly but there's enough different programs that it's worth looking at for sure. It's absolutely worth considering. It's not the, oh, it'll solve all the problems kind of thing because it won't because you have limitations. It's based on income, family size, and the, and the, um, the value of the home. Okay. Well, we're, we're talking about owner-occupied loans today. So just so everyone knows, this is not uh, non-owner-occupied. But I want to mention because I don't think people realize that – you could use an FHA loan to buy a, like a duplex or a fourplex, and some of the income from that property can be used towards the um, qualifying. In, qualifying, the income qualifying. Yeah. For, right? Yeah. My, that's one of my favorite things to do. Now, I've been around a while, so I've done, you know, my experience doing this directly is in the past, but I get to do it every week with. Um, folks that want to get into a home and it's tough. I mean, okay, we're in the Bay Area. It is tough. We're not going to uh, shy away from that. But if you're able to buy a, a duplex or a three-unit property with an FHA loan or, and again, low down payment and competitive rates and use the income of the other unit or two to help subsidize your uh, one, your obviously the monthly cash flow, but to help qualify, that's awesome. And it's a way to build equity and get into the market and not wait. That's the... Uh, well, you know, key. I'm not active in sales, but I do know just in in looking at inventory that's out there that, you know, a duplex is not really that much more than buying a single family home. And so if you can, uh, you know, purchase a duplex or a triplex and then, you know, use some of that income from the other units... Yeah, there you go. There's the leverage we're all looking for and and building wealth over time. And the loan limits increase by, you know, at 625,500 for a single family, but it goes up to now I didn't happen to bring that, but 800 some odd thousand for a duplex, 900 and whatever thousand for a triplex and over a million I think for a um four unit property. So Oh, well that's good to know. So so the limits increase with the with the number of units you're purchasing, right. And again, it's all owner-occupied. If, if one of the units is occupied, it's considered owner-occupied, which keeps the, you know, all the costs. Well, obviously, you couldn't do an FHA loan on non-owners, so it allows you to do a, uh, an FHA loan for your property and your home and 
sure, the first few years you're living in an apartment, but live in a duplex and build some equity. It's awesome. Well, some of these duplexes are pretty nice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and uh, so it's kind of like living in a single family attached home. Yeah, I'll uh, take a, a tangent there a little bit because there is a renovation aspect of both conventional lending and uh, the FHA that will allow you to purchase a home and have uh, funds set aside to improve it. Do you find? We'll talk about that. Okay. We'll, we'll talk back. about that in a, in a few minutes. But I just want to uh, mention one thing uh, or ask you about one thing um, as far as CalVet loans. Are they really, uh, can you really use them in the Bay Area or? Uh, sure. Because that's a whole different. Yeah, it's kind of a whole animal. different. Exactly. Exactly. So it's available. It's not something that we use that often because. We have other solutions, a straight VA loan and all that sort of stuff that... Um, Are simpler? Well, if it was a benefit to the client, we'd do it anyhow, but it usually is a wash and it doesn't really give them a, a, a more edge. benefit. Right, right. Okay. Well, that's... Because, um, you know, I was reading about CalVet loans and I and I know that you, they can be combined with a VA. Right, right. Uh, yeah. But it seemed a little more... If Paperwork. And yeah, if you get the 100% financing with a VA anyhow, using the CalVet in combination is, um, unless it's an advantage of the client, it's you know, not worth the effort. Okay. And uh, is there, I, I'm sure that there's a maximum on CalVet loan that is that even as high as a VA loan? I'm not, actually, I haven't looked at it recently, so I don't want to give you an exact number, but um, in what I was reading on it, I didn't, I couldn't get to them telling me what the maximum was. So you had to fill out. Yeah, right. You can kind of see how it's a little difficult to use it. But again, um, that's the stuff we we'll, we do for each individual client, trying to figure out the combination of strategies that'll get them into a home with the least amount of cost and the most long term benefit. Okay. Well, we are going to take a short break right now. And we'll be back. I'm talking to Clay Sellen with Signet Mortgage, and um, he's a loan officer, and we're talking about low-down, owner-occupied loans. So stay with us. You've heard that becoming a landlord just got easier with Rental Housing Network, the resource center for rental owners and property managers. Get the latest industry updates, access online forms, notices, run credit reports, and take classes to stay current on rental responsibilities. Even list your properties online for free. Come to their networking night to meet other property managers, also roofers to clean up companies every second Tuesday of the month. Go to rentalhousingnetwork.com. That's rentalhousingnetwork.com. The best way to protect your housing investments. Okay, we're back, and I'm talking to Clay Salem with Signet Mortgage, and we're discussing uh, owner-occupied, low-down loans um, that are available in the Bay Area for those who don't know what's available. So we've talked about government loans. So now let's talk about conventional loans. There are some conventional loans that are low-down, right? Sure, absolutely. The standard program that's now gotten back to 95% loan-to-value Okay, so that I, means... That, I think everyone thinks, okay, if I go conventional, I've got to have 20% down. Nope. I, I think that's the mindset. Right, right. Right? Yeah, there's two strategies with that. You can always do a second loan for 15% or 10, 10 or 15% and then do the 80% loan. But the, a little harder to qualify. So the um, other option is to do a 95% loan to value with mortgage insurance. That's kind of the standard program. You would have heard in the news for the last couple of weeks a My Community Mortgage, which is uh, was announced that puts the loan to value up to 97%. And so, you know, with a 3% down payment, um, that is a, a, a special program designed to get people in a home. A little tougher on the top end of it in the Bay Area, but still is available and has reduced mortgage insurance, but it still would have um, a mortgage insurance component. And one of the nice things, the government uh, just extended the deductibility of mortgage insurance. So it is treated just about the same as interest um, with respect to uh, your taxes and things like that. So that's, that's positive. Um, the fact that mortgage insurance um, is paid and it doesn't go to your principal and interest. You got to think through that as being um, uh, somewhat negative. 
Okay. It's just an extra fee, basically. Yeah, you pay each month. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it gets you in the home. And uh, really in the Bay Area with the prices, you do the math, and with the prices and values increasing, waiting is a very expensive thing to do, to wait around to collect that 20% or to find that resource. Right. Um, I agree. By the time you're, you're, you've are you you know saved that, your home value's gone up enough, you're probably behind. And now you got to save more. Because, exactly. Because yeah, you, you lost that window. Okay, so there are definitely 95% loans. And, and I think this valley... 97, yeah. There's a lot of money. People make, a, you know, a lot of... So a lot of people make a lot of money and they just don't, you know, put it away for a rainy day. I mean, they spend it. We, you know, we spend it. And, uh, but it's not that they can't af- afford to pay those mortgages. They pay high rents, you know, so that they can live in good neighborhoods. I know that for a fact because, You're you know, I'm, I manage right? rental properties. And, but I, it's not unusual for, um, uh, well, actually, most of my renters make very good money. Um, so they certainly, um, you know, could qualify if they had their down in some of their cases. Yeah, I think a good portion of it is with all the activity we've had, negative and positive over the past, well, now we're dealing six, seven years in the real estate market. Um, folks whose um, professional life and when they start making money and they look back at those, you know, kind of the crash we had and all that, makes people a bit anxious about investing in real estate. Those of us have been around a long time kind of know those cycles happen. This was a particularly bad one, obviously. Um, but wealth, long-term wealth, it comes through real estate. And when you think about paying the kind of rents that, you know, the market um, has now, uh, and that's going to a landlord or going somewhere else and out of your pocket, not deductible, not anything. Right. And it- you, you lose a lot of leverage. And when we sit down and go through the numbers and that you know, $2,800 or $3,000, whatever rent um, that you're paying, um, if you try to convert that to a low or no down purchase of a home, it, it's amazing how close it is. That balance is now, you know, pretty, pretty close. Well, yes. And the value is, it's cyclical. Uh, mm-hmm. We, we know that, you know, I know that I've been over, you know, I don't know how long, over 30 years in this business. And, and I've seen, you know, the cycles and yes, we have some dips, but then it comes back. And, and one thing that concerns me about the, because, you know, it used to be that everybody as, aspired to own a home. Yeah. It was and, uh, chicken in every pot and everybody buy a home kind of thing. Yes, yes absolutely. And, yes. And you wanted to have a, a, a car in your garage and now people have three cars in you. But the thing is that the mindset is different today. And that, you know, that concerns me for the future of the young people today, because, you know, if you you're 30 years old and you purchase a home or a condo or whatever today, you know, by the time you hit retirement, that's going to be paid off. And so you'll no longer have that rent payment or mortgage payment. And so your biggest cost is housing. Sure. Yeah. And if they can look down the line, even if you don't want to live there forever, just keep it. Uh, because once that property is paid off, you know, you don't have that housing expense in your retirement years. Yeah. And, and to me, that's your business, biggest expense. And so that's what you should be working towards. Right. Right. And it's being in, uh, I always look at it as being in control. You know, you're successful and you're happy and whatever, when you're in control of what happens, owning a home, knowing, you know, during that first 30 years, knowing what your monthly housing cost is going to be, um, relative, your income hopefully increases, not sort of thing, but you can set your housing cost. And even if you upgrade your house a couple times or whatever else, but looking at that as, I, I'm not subject to somebody else raising the rent or somebody else deciding they're going to take over the house or whatever. You're in control. That's a, a, a very secure feeling. It's something that I've enjoyed for many, many years. And um, But it, you're right. It is kind of a millennial thing that uh, that's not as important as it used to be. Um, and um, it should be, I think. I do, too. I, I agree. Now, with the high, uh, the high loan to values, it, are those fixed rates or yeah, uh, the choices you can are, still get the fixed rates? Yeah, the choices are are going to default to a fixed rate loan. Um, the, the spread between fixed rate and variable rate, to me, isn't enough to, 
you know, it can be done in certain situations. If somebody's um, going to serve a five-year, a seven-year assignment somewhere, okay, think about an adjustable rate. But right now, with the rate so darn low, it doesn't really make any sense to just put that away, lock it up, and you have a 30-year fixed rate and keep it there. Yeah, uh, and, I, you know, because we've been around so long, we know that this is a— Remarkable are, interest rate environment, absolutely. Yes, yes, because, yeah. you know, for so many years, it was, what, 7 8 9% interest rates you were looking at. Right. And so for it to be at, at this point right now— um, I think I would opt for a fixed rate if at all possible. I, yeah, I, I don't think I've, I've done maybe, you know, one or two percent of my loans I've done as uh, adjustable rates in the last Today, couple of years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's two things with FHA that I might not have mentioned, and we talked about government loans, but they have recently lowered the MI, so making FHA a bit more competitive. It, the mortgage insurance, when I refer to MI, pardon me. Um, that it was had been 1.35 percent. So when you talk about MI, you got to balance that into the cost of owning the home. Now that mortgage insurance is on your loan for five years. No, that's the terrible thing they did. They did oh. change this about two years ago. Um, it stays on the loan forever. So um, you it, literally at some point have to refinance exactly. in order to get rid of it. Yeah. And that was one of their. You know, the government has to balance that fund and make sure it serves its purpose and is adequately funded. So that was one of the changes they made, knowing that somebody's going to opt out of that loan at some point down the road. When the value gets to 78% or, you know, below 80%, that's, you refinance. It's kind of the um, standard exit strategy for a uh, FHA loan now. Now, what about on the conventional loans? Uh, the MI drops off automatically when the payment, uh, the amortization of the loan gets below a certain point, 78% usually, and um, you can refi off of it sooner if you um, if that made some sense. And uh, let us. So, let's say that you've increased in value and you've got um, and you've paid it down some, and you've got more than 20% equity in the property at that time. Now your lender's not going to tell you. You have no, to. They're, rec- not gonna, <laughs> yeah. they're not going to call you up. No. What, yeah, they're not paying attention. Right. Uh, um, what but, What you have to do then? You have a couple of choices. You can refinance out of it. That's an obvious choice. Um, but if your rate's already competitive, you don't want to do that. Um, you can challenge it, which means you contact the lender and you go through, and you might have to pay for an appraisal to prove that they're no longer subject to, you know, the sure. and loan to value is uh, conservative enough that they'll take the MI off. Okay, so. You started to talk about loans that included renovations and repairs, and I, I uh, yeah, kind we of went to break. put there. you on hold. <laughs> there you go. So uh, let's talk about that. I I get really excited about it because again, I'm all about trying to build wealth and find the ability to for someone purchasing a home to be as competitive in the market. And right now, we have homes that need help. Okay, they need renovation. Either it's paint and carpet, simple stuff, or it's a kitchen, or it's Forty thousand dollars in termite repair or a bad foundation. I mean, all those things are in the marketplace, and when they have wrinkles like that, the buyer is generally a cash buyer, and the cash buyer is asking for a discount from the seller, and the seller is giving it to them because they don't think there's choices. However, you both the FHA program has a program called two hundred three k, and the conventional side has a program called Home Style, and both of those are programs where renovations to the property, whether they're cosmetic, required, whatever. Now, there's a a little few differences between the two. I generally favor the home style and the conventional side because it has more flexibility. But you can put the budget for that kitchen or put the budget for the landscaping or whatever into essentially as if it's a purchase, uh, including the purchase price of the house. Then you're borrowing the 95% or 90%. We got to be careful. High balance areas, it's a little different. Um, you can you essentially are borrowing that ninety percent against or ninety five against the improved value or as improved value of the home, so that allows you to see that house in the corner that's a perfect location. The kids will go to school locally and all that, but it's a little tired. But you don't have the money to fix it up. We're talking about low down, so you don't have the money to fix it up. But you can set a budget, get the bids and that sort of thing to fix it up, make it nice, and. You borrow as if it's fixed up. The appraised value is as if it's fixed up. You, the purchaser, the seller is out of the picture. You paid them their money. You bought the house. And that funds are remaining in escrow. And those are a budget that you go out, get the house fixed up, make it yours, make it your home. 
Well, that sounds like a great way to go because there's it. so many of them are. Okay, well, we're running out of time, so I've got to sh- kind of cut you off. But if uh, I want to thank Clay for coming in. And if you have any questions that you want to address to Clay, how can they contact you? Well, uh, phone is 925-807-1503. Get 925-807-1503. And my email is clay at signetmortgage.com. Okay, we have some great guests coming up. We have the San Jose Mayor, Sam Licardo, that will be on the show, CPA William Slade, and Joy Walker with Aborn Properties. Thanks for being with us. To get more information uh, or to become a member, go to rentalhousingnetwork.com. That's rentalhousingnetwork.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. Preceding has been a paid program for Rental Housing Network.